But there's a second part to this, right? There's this part of it where, yes, I, I completely agree that podcasters need to watch your fucking mouth. And if they say something, you are liable to respond. And well, wrestlers are liable to respond or even fan accounts are liable to respond and drag them. Um, I, I completely I'm completely OK with that. But I'll, I'll say this, too. Uh, Twitter is the fucking devil. I say that already. But um, it's the devil because wrestlers are now being completely bitch ass and insensitive on Twitter. Um, and a lot of it is really is really quite sad. Like wrestlers, wrestling fans see things and they complain about things. And it's not always the most valid of uh, problems. You know, I saw Undertaker uh, vanity searching for heaven fucking sake, because some assholes don't like his T-shirts in the documentary. I say, why the fuck would he care? Why the fuck would Undertaker care about some assholes who he would not have known existed had he not searched out for them? Why the fuck does he, he care? Why the fuck does he care? I don't, I don't get that. That's the thing about Twitter. Like in the past, and it's really bizarre. Um, I remember people used to say like they, they old, old, the old guys never read the dirt sheets. They didn't give a fuck what Marx thought, right? They didn't give a shit that uh, Marx were, didn't like them or didn't like their match or you, you, you're, you're capable of having a four and a half star match, but you only have two and a half star matches because Vince McMahon doesn't want to let you do enough flips. Why the fuck would you care? Why the fuck would you care? Your job is to please the person who signs your checks. That's it. Assholes on Twitter do not matter. Why do you give a shit? Why do you care? Why do you vanity search? Like I, I have like like I said, people have weird, uh, weird quirks. One of mine is I don't like men in thong sandals. So I saw a picture of Stone Cold Steve Austin going to the grocery store. He was wearing thong sandals. I saw Undertaker in a documentary wearing thong sandals. And I said to myself, Why the fuck would two grown men be wearing thong sandals? But I didn't tweet that out because I have impulse control, right? Nobody gives a shit that Undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin are wearing thong sandals. Nobody cares. Okay. Like that's not something that I need to put out in the universe that I did. I saw that and I didn't like it, but let's say that I did. Why would they give a fuck about what I like and don't like? It has no bearing on their lives. Like <clears throat> earlier in 2020, uh, Braun Strowman made a comment, uh, it went to the effect of, if you can't make enough money, you need to get a new job, man. And, and about the uh, independent wrestlers, right? And people got really mad. They were really upset. I saw a lot of indie wrestlers who probably ain't never drawn a dime with a pencil on a piece of paper get really mad at Braun Strowman. Guess what he did? He didn't do shit. He didn't, he didn't apologize for it. What did he do? He started posting goddamn pictures of himself fishing. He's standing out sunbathing. He don't give a fuck about that shit at all. That's how you handle idiots on Twitter and social media who are constantly fucking complaining. Your, your response should not be to tweet and get all ass mad because some idiots on Twitter don't like you. Who the fuck cares? You can really, <clears throat> if this particular female wrestler was so bothered by this particular podcaster saying this certain thing about her, which, tweeting about it. It's only going to turn him into a fucking victim because some people tend to believe what I said in the previous part of this um, commentary is that if you have a bigger following, that means that you are victimizing somebody with a smaller following. They tend to believe that, even though I don't believe that it's true. Other people tend to believe that. So they, you turn him into a martyr, essentially. What you should have done is if you were so bothered, you should see how little you can do and continue to get paid for it. If he says that you're lazy... Like, okay, well, I'm going to do even less, <laughs> you know, I'm going to do even less and continue to get paid and be fine with it. And I'm not saying that, you know, money matters and all that type of stuff, even though it does. I mean, you, you got to eat, you got to pay, got to pay mortgages and stuff like that. But let's be honest, you know, that guy is not going to help you. If anything, it also turns other people against you because like I said, you turn them into a martyr. So now you got people who probably never even talked to this guy, never talked about this guy, taken up for him because your big bad 1.8 million followers or whatever the hell attacked this guy, even though I'm pretty sure most of your followers don't have to. 
a, t a good 10% is enough to take down most of these people, right? So if you got like 100,000 followers going after this guy, that's usually enough to suitably chase this individual. But you need to go, we need to get back to wrestlers not caring what people think on the internet. Stop caring. Like, it wasn't until recently that people actually did care. I don't remember, you know, like I used to see people say the most absurd things on the internet. Okay. Um, I remember when I wasn't watching wrestling in 2004, uh, I was following along because I was one of those lapsed fans that uh, I watched it when I was a kid, but now I wasn't watching it anymore. And, uh, there was people, I'm going to say the offensive stuff. So there was, uh, people who were like, um, yeah, um, I can't believe they gave Eddie Fagrero the title fag as in he's a homosexual. Uh, I can't believe they gave Eddie Fagrero the championship. Like this company is, he's a mid card guy, you know? And he's like, well, well, whatever. I wasn't watching. So I didn't know what happened. I didn't know the, the, the context of the situation. I didn't know what took place. I was just knee jerk reaction. Cause the last time I saw Eddie Guerrero, he was, you know, the intercontinental champion. He was kind of skinny. He was barely over. Nobody really knew who he was. Nobody really cared about, you know, the Latino. He, even though people, you know, they say they do now, people really didn't care about him then. You know, I thought he was funny, but they didn't really, you know, they didn't really connect with him in that way. And then, you know, that sort of thing is routine on sites like 4chan and, and stuff like that. That's just sewer dwelling rat shit. Why do, why do wrestlers put themselves in a particular to look at that? I don't, I, I would hope that AD Guerrero did not take his time to go and find this idiot who called him a fag on some message board somewhere. And get upset about it. I will hope he didn't. He had more to do than that. And that's you know kind of what I said before about the maybe it's the pandemic. Maybe it's because everybody is trapped in the house now that you know you have more time to do more things. And now you're ruminating about what you could be doing, even though you could literally go to the beach or literally do something else and stuff, or you know getting into arguments with morons on Twitter. This is not the. It's not a constructive use of your time as a wrestler it is not a constructive use of your time it is fucking dumb okay to argue with dipshits on twitter it is fucking stupid it is it shows that you're insecure and sometimes because wrestlers are now more open with their insecurities because kayfabe is dead nobody is pretending to be tough anymore Nobody's pretending to be competent anymore. Everybody wants to meme. Every match is a meme. You know, <clears throat> these type of things are are just becoming more commonplace. And it's actually quite terrible. You know, it's it's not you're not larger than life at that point. You're very life, okay? And people are tired of that shit. Like, yes, sometimes people want it to be like Dusty Rose or be like Steve Austin, but Steve Austin and Dusty Rose are still larger than life characters. They have every man elements to them, but they were still larger than life characters. All larger than life characters have an every man deeps and within them. Superman has Clark Kent. Pirate Spider-Man has Peter Parker, Bruce Wayne. Well, well, yeah, cause Bruce Wayne is kind of a socially awkward multimillionaire. You know, it's not quite the same. I don't know why I used him, but you know, Steve Rogers is an every man, you know, but you know, there's still that, that core to them that is larger than life, that is heroic, that people can look up to and look in and, you know, and be impressed with. And that is definitely shattered when you're fucking vanity searching yourself on Twitter, you know, because you're interested in what people are thinking about you or your t-shirts or your move sets or your match qualities. And it's like, it's, it can't be good for your mental health. It cannot be. And this goes also back to the Hannah Kimura situation, even though, cause she was on TV. Now that part, I did know that she was on a, a Netflix special or a Netflix TV show or whatever. And, uh, she got upset because somebody she was living in the house with, uh, ruined her, one of her uniforms and she went off on the guy in a very nice Japanese way, by the way. Like when, when that sort of thing, when I watched that, I was like, that's it. That's all. If it was in America, she'd have called them all kind of bitches and motherfuckers and flew off the handle and probably threw stuff at them and, you know, really acted a fool, but it's Japan. So, you know, basically just saying mean things is like, oh my goodness, how could you be so mean? 
But, you know, and she got firebombed, you know, and she killed herself for a cyberbullying. Okay. Now, put, putting aside that, you know, uh, the cyberbullying concept, you know, you, you, you have to be able to handle criticism. You've got to be able to handle criticism. This goes for everybody involved. Everybody involved needs to be able to handle criticism. If you cannot, will not be able to withstand people saying bad things about you, don't be on Twitter. Please, for your own mental health, get the fuck off. Okay? Stop tweeting. Stop Facebooking. Stop Instagramming. Stop TikToking. Stop doing all that shit. Get the fuck out of here. If you're going to cry about it, get the fuck off. I'm not saying quit your job. And maybe your job requires for you to have a Twitter account. But you can just tweet out, hey, everybody, watch Raw this Monday. And then that's it. Okay? I don't give a shit. Like, hey, it might be cool that you're cosplaying. It might be cool that you have a Twitch channel. But I don't give a shit about that stuff. And most people don't. Okay? And the idea that we, we're, we're supposed to, we're living in a world where wrestlers have so much accessibility that it's good for some fans, but it's not good for the wrestler. Because now you have to deal with, you know, like Paige, for instance. Paige constantly complains on Twitter about people harassing her and saying negative stuff about her, about the new pictures that, that leaked and all that type of stuff. And she's constantly complaining, but she, she, she does more shit. She says she doesn't do less shit. She does more shit. She complains, then starts a Twitch channel. Complains, starts a TikTok channel. It's like, what the fuck? Do the opposite. Do the opposite. Do less. Because, oh, now the assholes who are bothering you on Twitter just jumped over to your YouTube channel. The assholes who are following you on Twitter and YouTube just jumped over to your Twitch channel. It's like, that's, that's really all it is. If, if it's not good for your mental health and you cannot handle it, you need to quit. You need to leave. You need to preserve the heroic qualities that are within you by telling these people to A, fuck off, and B, shutting it down. Okay? And yes, it may look like it's bad that you're letting the bullies win. But it, what's more important? You know, crying on Twitter, running off the few fans that you do have, or preserving your own dignity and your own mental health by saying, guess what? I'm not on Twitter. I'm not going to follow this shit because, yes, for every positive comment and you post something positive, you post a picture of your dog or some shit. Here comes a deluge of assholes to talk about, hey, what did you do sexually with your dog, man? It's like there's fucking degenerates on Twitter. OK, there's fucking degenerates on social media. Period. The anime avatars and the wrestling, the female wrestling fan avatars and the AEW fans and all these people, they're fucking degenerates. Okay? And sometimes you feed these people the Owen Hart documentary. Oh, shit. I, I blocked the words Martha, the words Hart, and the word Owen Hart. <laughs> I blocked every version of that long before the episode dropped because I knew something was going to happen. And I was, guess what? I, I made it. I survived. Okay. <laughs> there was people who were having meltdowns on Twitter, arguing with various people on these sites about this shit. It's not, it's not necessary. It's not good for you. It's not good. Stop doing it. Okay. Stop being, stop trying to be tough when you're not tough. Okay. Tweet out your promotional uh, stuff. That's what Vincent Man does, right? Vincent Man shows you how to use Twitter. He, pro he promotes holidays days and that's fucking it <laughs> that's it follow the leader especially if you work in wwe follow the leader this man tweets once a month you know he tweets you know maybe twice or two times two three times a month he tweets birthdays and holidays that's fucking it okay <laughs> so you know, he disappears i don't you know like everybody needs to do the same thing don't vanity search yourself you know Stop, you know, answering snitch tags. In fact, D, if you have a fan account that's snitch tagging you, DM that fan account and tell them to stop snitch tagging you. Stop spreading that, that nonsense towards you. That's how you handle this situation. You don't vanity search yourself to look for reasons to get upset and then start emoting all over Twitter. 
Because you're ruining not just your gimmick. You're ruining the fucking business. Because you're making wrestling considerably less fun. With all the fucking bitching and crying and complaining and victim blaming and all this bullshit that's going on. Stop it. 